Hello and happy Monday, everybody. I am lead pro-educator for Amica, Christina Carlson, and I'm really excited to share this styling for social media, kind of like a preview class for you today. Um, normally, this is a longer, intensive, we do a lot of talking class, so I'm really going to share with you the greatest hits of creating better styling moments for your uh, social media content. I have some great tips for you about taking pictures, taking video. We're gonna cover all the good stuff today. And for those of you that are new friends to Amika or old friends with Amika, you're gonna learn a lot about our Amika styling and finishing products today. I wanna make sure that you get all of the good tips for creating the best look for your social media. So this is really one of my favorite classes. We get requests for this class so much and I get always so many questions about what are the best ways to actually create the content that you're posting. I know social media can be so overwhelming. Um, creating a follower base and engagement and hashtags and all of the things that we think have to think of in a day and that are constantly changing and updating. Uh, what we're going to be going over today are really the basics. I want to give you the 101 on the actual creation, the looks that you're creating, the finishing that you're doing um, in the salon, on set, so that you are creating the best hair to photograph. And then again, we'll go through some like really detailed photography um, just on your phone. You don't need to have a fancy camera. We don't need to have a whole lot more than just the sunlight. We'll talk about ring lights. Um, but I really want to give you some posing and some phone camera tips so that you guys are getting the best level of content for whatever reason that you're using social media for your hair game. Um, this is going to give you the building blocks to create that better content. So if you have any questions throughout this class, please feel free to drop them in the chat as I'm talking. I'll be checking in with you from time to time. Uh, we have my lovely model, Rachel, here today that we're going to be demoing the actual styles on. Um, I am going to call my wife in at some point in time to be our posing model so you can really see these poses in person. Uh, and why don't we go ahead and jump in? So, Amika, a friend to hair, hairstylist to her, him, them, and you. Amika is a styling-centric education go-to. All of our classes are centered around styling, around bridal styling, braiding, vintage styling. And so, of course, we're going to give you the most up-to-date styling tips for your social media looks. Now, I know that we often, let's talk specifically about the salon. I am a salon stylist. I own a salon. Um, I have a very lovely clientele that are constantly humoring me, letting me take great before and after pictures for them. Um, I also work on set, so I get a little bit of both worlds. And oftentimes we want to create looks. I mean, all the time. We want to create looks for our clients in the salon that they feel very comfortable and cool going out in, like they just got their hair done, they're feeling their best. A lot of times that look ends up being just kind of a really classic beachy wave. Um, great. We love the beachy wave. It's a, it's a whole look. Our clients love it. So I actually want to give you some variations on waves that photograph really well, that clients respond really well to, that look very cool, but are maybe like a slight departure from our just typical curling iron beachy wave. So let's get into the actual styling portion of this. We're going to get hands on with my girl, Rachel. Um, and we are going to start in the back. Now you're going to be learning on three tools today. We have three different tools that we are going over one is just released. This is our Jumbo High Tide Deep Waver. This is perfect for longer and medium length hair. This is going to give you a softer wave. If you hear that little sound, that is our next tool. This is our conductor styler. It auto shut off. 
good girl. So I know that it turns off when I leave the room. Um, and I just picked it up. So it turns itself right back on. This is a really convenient tool to have in the salon because of that. It's going to auto shut off when you're not using it. The second you lift it up, it's going to turn right back on, right back to the original heat settings that you left it at. And our last tool we're going to be using is the Chameleon. This is a titanium wand set. I believe this size is a little bit over an inch. Um, so we're going to learn on all three of those today. So we'll cover all the ground. So what we want to do first is I want to create a base wave for this look that's going to photograph really well. Now, of course, we want to work with a hair type. We want to work with the look, our client's personal style. But let's talk specifically about what kind of waves photograph really well for social media. Now, I want to create a base wave underneath. We're going to have a separate wave on top, and I'm going to create a base wave in this large section underneath that is going to give us the perfect amount of body and volume and photograph really well when we get to that section. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my fingers to kind of naturally separate. I'm not working like the round of the head occipital bone up. I'm going to put this section up and we're going to work on this entire section which appears to be a huge section. You're like, this, ma'am, this would be like three different sections. Not with the Jumbo High Tide Deep Waver. This is really going to cut down your time and it creates that really beautiful loose wave finish that is going to photograph so well for our socials. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my detangling brush and I'm going to work that brush through. Rachel got a shampoo last night, so she's feeling good today. So I'm gonna make sure I have any kinks worked out on that. And I am going to grab my shield heat protectant. Now, if you follow me on social media already, I'm Christina Carlson Quaff on everything COIF. Um, I did recently make a video demoing the power of the shield. And if you haven't gotten an opportunity to see that, please do so. Not just to look at my video, but honestly, it gives you a really great visual on how the shield works. It's a heat protectant. It's a style extender in humidity, which is not just weather. It's you. <laughs> Your scalp creates humidity. Um, so this is going to help for any clients who say that their hair doesn't hold a curl. This is going to be the product for them. So I already went through, I did a pass with the shield and I'm going to take my first section. So this is a very large section here. I'm going to work my fingers through and we are going to grab this Jumbo High Tide Deep Waver. Now, there are two ways that you can use a deep waver. One is the classic positioning is horizontal and that creates kind of like a large crimp look. Beautiful, very cool, can show up really cool in photographs. Um, we wanna do something a little bit more natural looking. This is how I tend to use the deep waver, either the regular size or the jumbo. I'm gonna actually elevate this section up and we're gonna come in at an angle, and this is going to give a much more natural looking wave to the hair. So for clients that don't necessarily love that really like carved out sculpted look with a beach waver, this is gonna be a better positioning for them and it looks a lot more natural. So you can see right off the bat when this lays down, even without any products or brushing that out, it gives you a much more natural, relaxed ridge. And I can go ahead and grab another section. And I'm gonna work through that. I'm gonna make sure any knots are out and I'm going to elevate that again, just like so. And we're gonna press this. So for those of you who are very busy in the salon, I think that's all of us. 
this is a fantastic tool to have on hand to really get that high volume kind of undone wave look very quickly. This is going to work very, very, very quickly. So I go through and press. I'm already halfway through this very large section. I'm going to let that cool. Don't touch it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm already halfway through this section. So again, this is really going to create a perfect base for the final look that we're doing for our Insta. <laughs> Do you hear that? See, the conductor knew that I wasn't using it and it shut off so I don't have to panic attack about it. So I'm again going through and I'm going to definitely, I want to keep letting this cool, but I want you to really see how beautiful that wave looks. Now this gives us, in my opinion, a much more like beachy wave look without doing a curling iron wave. For clients that maybe those kind of like curling iron waves feel a little bit too, 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 <laughs> too extra. Um, this is a great alternative. So I'm going to go through again and we're working at that angle. Now, if you are wanting to line up the ridges on a tool like this, you really want to get that sculpt going. The best way to do that, easy peas, is to flip it over so that you can see the ridges. So right here, I'm looking towards myself. I can line up those ridges and make those ridges really sculpted and beautiful. But for this, again, I want it to be a little bit more lived in. I want it to be looser. So I'm going to let that cool. Now I'm going to come back over to this section. And I want to give this one more a little bit longer. And I'm going to place this so that you can see. I'm not using any tension. I want to be very loose with this. And you can see just in those couple minutes. I have done half of the back of the head. I mean, this is maybe half of the whole head. <laughs> I just did using this beach waver. So I want you guys to see up close. This is without brushing it out, without any product. This is the look of the beach waver, the jumbo beach waver. This is going to photograph beautifully. We'll get into those tips in a minute. Um, but before that, I want to really kind of set these. I'm going to grab Fluxus. This is a workable, brushable hairspray. Um, I want to give you a tip right off the bat. This is true for salon styling. This is true for set styling. You want to use hairsprays in very small doses. So typically how I'm using hairsprays, there's three ways. One is just like I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a very lightweight working spray. And while my hair is cooling, I'm just going to set the midsection here. I'm just going to set the midsection. This is going to lock in my heat styling as it's cooling in the area that is the most weighted and tends to elongate or kind of like lose its shape a little bit. So I'm only going to spritz that a little bit here. Small doses. The second time I'm using hair spray is in the very end, I'm doing a little bit of detailing. You'll see I've got some fake bangs we're gonna style today. If you don't, if you don't believe me, woohoo, perfect color match. Um, we, I will use hairspray to do a little bit of detailing, little bit of detailing, tiny. And the third time I'm using hairspray is if I'm doing an updo or up styling, I'm using hairspray as a base product to pin into, to give it a little bit of stick. So I'm not one to go in, and this is from years of working on set where you have to transition looks or you want the hair to really last, like uh, doing bridal, you want the hair to really last all day. Minimal hairspray is best. I tend to lean more on texture sprays and also dry shampoos. 
as a finishing product to give the hair like a little bit of something, a little bit of, um, I don't want to say grit, but yeah, maybe a little bit of grit. Um, but really to give the hair, it will last longer. The style will last longer if we're not dousing it with hairspray. So I just went in a little bit. I'm still letting it cool. I'm not brushing anything out. And we are going to switch to this top section now. So we are going to use a different tool now. Let's engage my conductor. Okay, putting <laughs> that back on. I'm gonna show you some styler waves that I really love to do at the salon that photograph really, really, really well. So first, I unclip my hair and I'm gonna grab my detangling brush. Now, if I am, say, pretend we just did a blowout. This is my client, Rachel. We're getting ready to take some really cool pictures outside. I wanna make sure that this hair is smooth all the way through. That's feeling good. I'm going to again grab the shield. This is my heat protectant and my style extender. This is gonna keep that salon style in. I do one pass on the top and I'll do a second pass on the bottom if their hair is particularly thick, if it's a very hot day. Um, I know a lot of y'all are in California and I'm sure it is hot out there. I am in the Pacific Northwest, so it's raining um, and it's actually really beautiful, I'll tell you. Okay, so we are going to do a different type of styler wave. Now, we call our flat irons at Amica, we call them the stylers because we don't use iron. Iron is not a very dependable material. Um, it tends to have natural divots in it. It can have like cool spots or hot spots. So we don't use iron at all. And that's why we use the term styler instead of flat iron. So here is my styler. I am taking this large section and this is one of my favorite techniques to create a really cool looking, just kind of different wave in the hair. So you can get, take a break from your curly iron for a second so you can really see this look. So I am going to grab this section. I have my styler at 370. I work at 370, 380 pretty much all of the time. For coarser hair, I will turn it up a little bit. For very high, fine hair, I'll turn it down a little bit. But really, with these kind of lived-in styles, thing, styles that we're uh, photographing for social media, you really want to not go in very hot. That's when you tend to get more frizz, more dense in the hair, um, and it just looks a little too pronounced. It doesn't look as like soft, if that makes sense. So I am going in at 370, and I'm taking this styler. I'm going to roll this down. I flip around and I'm going to roll like this. I'm back. I roll under. And then I'm going to do the same right here and then just kind of elongate that out. So what this does is create this very, very soft, polished wave. But it doesn't give you too much volume. Now I know we love volume. Volume is great. But on some hair types, working in the salon, working with so many different types of people, so many different hair types, not all look great with a curling iron wave. Sometimes you need a little extra smoothing in there. And that's when I really like to go in with this particular type of styler wave. It looks really polished. It's easy to do. Um, and sometimes I have clients that don't want to have like a super waved look when they leave. They want it to look a little bit more kind of relaxed and cool. Like, did she just leave the salon? Um, so I'm going through, I'm going to kind of smooth right up here. And I'll do this technique for you again. So we are rolling under. I pause, I come out, and I'm rolling to the side. Now I'm back, I'm rolling under, and I might even just grab the ends now. We don't need to do a whole lot to the ends. Ends get a lot, like too much attention sometimes. 
I am going to just roll that through so that it's nice and smooth and we'll let that cool. We're not going to touch it. Now we'll grab another section over here. And you can see I'm working pretty quickly through this. So this is a great technique for the salon. When you're trying to get some really good picks, you want your, you need to get your socials, need to get your picks done, um, but you don't have a whole lot of time in between clients. This is a great technique for that um, to get that really cool lived in look. So I'm gonna let this section drop. I'll clip this away. You can also see, this is a tip for particularly for photographing hair, is that having this tighter wave underneath and a softer, larger wave on top, the difference between the two of these when we take pictures is really, it's more visually engaging. And that really is what it comes down to with creating content for your social media. Hair, hair is hair. I mean, I, I love hair. Don't get me wrong, it's my whole career. I love it. But in the echo chamber that is social media, how many pictures of just hair can we really look at? I urge you to take these opportunities to find ways to make the hair looks that you're doing, this beautiful hair that you're doing, to find more engaging ways to share that. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to do so. So we will do this technique one more time. I'm taking a larger section here so you can really see up close. We're going to smooth the top. I'm going to come in here. I roll under. Now I'm being really subtle in my roll. It's not a dramatic roll at all. And then I'm coming at an angle here. I'm rolling that. I come in here. I roll again. I'm going to pause. We're going to take these ends. And I'm just rolling them like so, so that we smooth them out just a little bit. And beautiful, love it already. Now I'll take this, these last two sections and I'm going to smooth this out. Now you'll notice that I'm taking pie shaped sections. This is a must with styling. I, I really don't believe that any styling should be on horizontal or vertical angles. It doesn't work with the round of the head very well. On certain hair types, that looks even more pronounced and it just doesn't photograph well. So all of this comes back to better styling for photography, which is your social media. So I like to take diagonal and pie-shaped triangular shaped sections all of the time. No vertical <laughs> horizontals here. Okay, so I'm on my last section here. I'm going to grab my styler and you can see me do this one more time before we switch tools. And I'm kind of letting this cool, I'm gonna zhuzh that wave out a little bit, but I haven't put any product on it. We're gonna just let it cool like so. I'm gonna take this in one more time. I'll let you see this technique. I'm rolling under, I come out, I'm rolling at an angle towards me, under, and then I grab these ends and we're just rolling like so to smooth those out. Perfect. Okay, so now the entire back of the head finished in just a few minutes. I'm going to again grab Fluxus. This is my working hairspray. Someone needs a bang trim. Look at that. I'm going to grab this and I'm coming in just very light with that Fluxus to let this cool. We're not going to touch it at all yet. Now, we're going to switch tools. I want to show you a great finishing technique for these front sections. Rachel can really see. And you can see here, just looking at the difference in the longer wave sitting on top of this tighter wave with the two different tools, 
gives a really beautiful finish and is going to make the hair look like it has more volume and more body, which our clients always love. So next step, I am going to take my, again, I'm coming in with my detangling brush. I'm going to work that through. Now we are going to use the chameleon. This is our wand. Um, I'm going to grab a different heat protectant this time. Um, we're going to use blockade, which is a serum. So I just have a lightweight serum and I'm going to work that through the midsection and the ends because that's really what I'm focusing on. I'm going to put a little bit more on here. Okay, so let's get into wand styling. So I'm using, this is a 25 millimeter, which I believe is actually a little bit under an inch. Um, we are going to use this in two different ways so you can really see the difference. Um, the first, we are going to hold this more um, vertically, but at an angle, because you know how I feel about that. Um, I'm going to separate this entire front section into two. I'll grab this clip and I'm going to clip this away. So I have this entire front section here. I'm going to separate this into two tall sections. They're technically vertical, but it's working at an angle with the round of her head. So I'm going to take this and we are going to use the wand and wrap with the wand straight down like this. I'm gonna wrap that around. And I'm gonna leave those ends out. I wanna really just get the midsection. This is a great tip to give for clients when they're learning to do style their own hair at home. Um, Cause it is such a user friendly way to use it. And it gets a much by using it at hold, held down or held up, this is going to be a much sleeker wave versus I'll show you on the opposite side how I get a little bit more volume. So this is a great example for either. I am alternating the direction. So I'm doing just a flat wrap in the section and I alternated the direction. And I'm gonna let that go, we'll let that cool. And I'll grab this top section. And we'll do that again. I'm gonna take this. Now this is for, I want a style that's like a little bit more uh, calm. Let's say calm. <laughs> this is like, we don't want a lot of volume. We want more of the body in the midsection here. We want it just a very loose wave. I'm gonna go in again, just in the midsection, flat wrap. And I'm leaving those ends out. We don't need to include them at all. And when that's hot to the touch, a good rule of thumb, this is a great tip to share with clients and it's perfect for photos for your social media, is around the cheekbones. That's a great place to start the wave so that it looks a little bit more subtle, um, a little bit more natural. And in this top section, I'm going to go in with my wand and right, maybe at the round of the head, I'm gonna have my alternating wave and we'll let that go. Okay, so I'll show you before we do any brush out on this. This is what that looks like. You can see that it is, most of the attention is here in the midsection. That's gonna photograph really well. It's very loose up in this section. So let's do a slightly different version on the other side. All right, I'm gonna let this clip go. Rachel's gonna look so good today. Um, I am going to apply a little bit more of that blockade heat defense serum. Work that through the midsection first and then through the ends when it's mostly off my hands, I'm going to apply that through the top section. Okay, so I wanna get a little bit more volume. I want a little bit more body on this side. I'm gonna separate this again in half. 
And let's go ahead and clip this up. So I'm going to take this section and we're going to work more horizontally. So I let me actually move Rachel. Can I do this? No. <laughs> it's a very delicate setup in here. Don't mess around with it. Okay, so I'm going to take this section and we are going to wrap more to horizontal, but I want to keep this tilted up a little bit, just like so. This is going to work with the slope of her face and her head, and it's going to look more flattering on camera. It will less likely to have bulk right by the eye, right by the cheekbone. It's gonna be more of like a flowing angle. So I take this entire section, I'm going to over direct it forward. This is a key. I'm going to over direct this forward and then we're going to do the same flat wrap but at this angle here same flat wrap i'm leaving those ends out and when it's hot to the touch we'll go ahead and drop and already you can see that this is going to create more volume i'm going to take this section down we're going to separate this into two And again, this is going to be over-directed. I'm gonna over-direct all of this forward. So I have this entire section over-directed. We're gonna come in and wrap, flat wrap. Perfect. I'm gonna leave those ends out. We don't need the ends in. And when that is hot to the touch, we can release. Perfect, and we'll do one more. Now I'm gonna alternate the direction of this and we're actually going to point backwards now, but I'm still using it at that angle. And this is going to create, by alternating, this is what creates a more, um, a more natural, more interesting, more voluminous wave versus if we do it all in the same direction, that's gonna create a sculpted wave, which is beautiful, but that's a whole other look. Okay, so we're gonna let that cool. Now, before we do any brush out on these, I want you to see the difference in the two looks. So you can see right off the bat by creating this wave with the wand upwards, downwards like this, more at a vertical, still at an angle, we're always angled, but held vertically, that's going to create this kind of, it, it's not less volume, it's a little less volume. It's a little bit more demure. Um, and then on this side, we are differing kind of a horizontal, but still angled with the wand here, and that's gonna give you a lot more volume. So let's go ahead and break this apart now i had said earlier that i don't always just go straight in with a ton of uh hairspray we want to actually break it up with something a little different now there's two products i typically do this with and that is dry shampoo perk up dry shampoo dry shampoo is an awesome finishing product it's not just for absorbing oil it really helps to add softness and fullness to hair, even when you've just washed it and just styled it. Um, the second product that I tend to use is Undone. This is a volumizing texture spray. So that's gonna add more of a lived in feel to this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab a wide tooth comb and I'm gonna kind of just break this up. I already love it. I already love it. I'm gonna break this up, break up that wave. Gorgeous. And I just go into town. I used to use my fingers to kind of break apart that styling. Perfect. And then I'm going to grab perk up. I'll do perk up on one side and undone on the other. So this is right before we're taking our pictures. This, These are your last few steps 
to finishing the hair, to making sure the styling is ready to photograph. So I'm going to grab, on this side, we're gonna do perk up. So I'm gonna spray a little bit of that perk up in the midsection and a little bit up at the top. And I'm gonna kind of massage that in and activate the spray. Beaut. And on the other side, I am going to grab, you can see how much volume that adds here. On the other side, we're gonna use undone texture spray. So I'm going to spray that in the midsection and then I'll do a little bit up at the top and kind of break that up at the top. Perfect. So you can see right off the bat, the difference in the volume and the look around the face. This is going to give a lot more body, a lot more volume on this side. And this looks like a lot more lived in, relaxed. In the back, we have even more of that kind of relaxed wave. We can go ahead and break that up. And I'm not gonna go back in with hairspray just yet. So we're gonna Break this apart even more. I like to go in and kind of massage at the root before we start taking pictures. You, 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 you. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to break this apart. Okay. She is gorgeous. I'm ready to go. Now, she wants a little fringe action. This, I get questions about styling fringe for salon clients, for photos, for Instagram all of the time. And I'm going to give you right now my top tips for this, um, particularly for bottleneck bangs, for curtain bangs, for shag type fringe. This is really the defining tips <laughs> for styling, especially for pictures. So if we are coming in with our bangs here. I'm gonna go ahead and clip those in. Uh, already cuter. Okay, so number one tips for fringe. Let me turn all of these off so they don't fall down and burn my head. Okay, so I am using a styler. I'm gonna turn my styler down. I had earlier said that I typically work at like 370, 380. I'm gonna turn this down to like 330, 320. Now, we already have a little bit of the styling in from a previous video, but I really wanna show you how I break this apart. So if we're looking at fringe, styled the way that we are currently styling. So shag styling, again, like curtain bangs, bottleneck, et cetera, like a more modern styling for fringe, for bangs. Think of this as three sections. You have your middle section, always pie-shaped. You have your middle section and you have your two side sections. The two side sections should be lightly beveled under. So I'm going to take this section here and we're going to lightly bevel that under just like that. We're going to do the same on this side. So I'm going to take over here on the side. And if you're unclear about where the side is, it is typically where the brow bone hits. So I'm going to take this second side section and we are going to bevel that under. Again, low heat, low heat. I cannot repeat this enough. If you're going in on high heat, this is going to look bananas and it's not going to photograph well. So I'm on low heat. I'm taking these two side sections and I'll show you one more time. I'm going to bevel that under. I even wanna say bend versus bevel. Um, and this mid middle section here, I'm going to take this piece and we're going to, I call it zhuzhing, other people say pancaking, but I'm going to take this and we're going to pull this up. So you see I'm getting a little height here with this middle section on the fringe. I'm going to take 
my styler and just press that for a second and we'll let that cool. That's it. That is gonna be a game changing tip for you when you're styling fringe. So once that cools, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the closer. This is an instant repair cream for split ends, but it's also a really good finishing cream for face framing fringe. It gives you like a little extra hold and definition. So I'm adding just a tiny bit to my hands and I'm going to kind of piece out, create pieciness. And I do that with this motion with a little bit of product on my hands. I'm gonna shape that even, I'm in encouraging this to be lifted a little bit. And I'm creating a C shape here. Just using my hands. Perfect. So I mentioned one of the times that I use hairspray is for a little bit of detailing at the end. That's what we're gonna do right now. I'm grabbing Headstrong, which is a freeze hold hairspray. And I'm going to lift up a little bit on the edges here. We'll cover her face because I'm nice like that. And we're gonna just lightly detail right here, just a freeze hold. This is if when you're going outside to take your pictures for social, just a little bit in the fringe, a stronghold hairspray, this is going to save your life. So let's look at this all over look. She's looking very cute, very cool. We can see that styling, those little tips in the fringe, just really help bring that together and make the whole look look connected. This is gonna photograph better. Um, so let's get into that conversation. Let's talk about the photographs. So I temporarily am gonna move Rachel to the side just for a minute, if she wants to. We're gonna move Rachel to the side over here and I'm actually going to bring a model in, my wife, um, to show you some quick tips on posing. Um, before we do that, let me just show you a couple go-to tips for taking pictures on your phone. Number one, go ahead and take your phone out. Number one, you are always working in portrait mode. Always. Do not bother in regular photo mode. I'm sure you have your ways and you feel attached to it, but I have to tell you, at the end of the day, there is no reason why you should have this expensive piece of machinery with these fantastic cameras and not be using portrait mode. If you don't have portrait mode, don't worry. If you have it, you need to be using it. Now in portrait mode, see me in here. In portrait mode, we have two adjustable items. We have the f-stop here and we have the exposure over here. So the f-stop is going to adjust. If I press that little f for the f-stop, the f-stop allows you to adjust how blurry the background gets. I keep it on a lower setting. I'm usually at 2.8 so that there's a little bit of blur to the background. It brings your image to the forefront, but it's not so blurry that it's a little distracting or that I like to still see some of the texture and a little bit of the pieces in like on the edge of the hair. I like that. So I keep it on a lower f-stop so that it's not completely blurring those out. The other option over here is your exposure. So when I press that exposure is how bright. I tend to, and I recommend keeping this also on a lower setting. You can adjust it later if you need to. But typically cell phone cameras, when you go outside and you're working in indirect sunlight is the best, indirect sunlight. We wanna be near the sun, but not directly in the sun. California, I know that's hard because it's sunny everywhere, but you want really want to be finding your spots where there's indirect sunlight. So even in that indirect sunlight, our cell phone cameras tend to not know how to adjust the lighting well, and they will lean towards bright, which is going to wash out color. It's going to wash out detail in your finishing. 
it just doesn't all, it looks blown out and it loses a lot of the detail that you worked really hard to create. So top two tips for using your camera phone is portrait mode and adjusting both the f-stop and the exposure to be a little bit lower. You're going to get better detail that way. So let's talk about the actual poses. I'll bring my model in. Kiki. <laughs> Meet my wife. <laughs> this is my wife, Kiki. Um, I'm going to use Kiki to demonstrate to you some really easy posing tips. Um, this is, she's doing this for you, for me, actually, um, because I think she really hates me having to pose her, or you appreciate it a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know what to do, so. Most people don't. Yeah. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to actually pose your clients for pictures. These are just standard go-to poses. Now, number one, you are going to have your client against a clear background. I can't stress this enough. Stop taking pictures in the salon chair. Just stop doing it. It's too busy. It's too junked up around. You're not really getting the best finish. You're not really giving the spotlight to the style. You need to have a clear background. Wherever you work, if you're in a suite, if you're in a salon, you want to take some time to find a really clear background, either in the salon or like a brick wall outside of the salon. I've been to so many salons and so many salon republics that I know for a fact that you guys have these places around. You just need to do a little digging. Um, I bought this brick wall. So we have this little fake brick wall, which is great for the salon. You can buy these online um, and it just gives you a really good basic background that feels a little bit interesting, but doesn't take away from the look. So with posing, you are going to have your client stand just like this. And then I have them lean forward from the hip. Yes, perfect. So what this does now, of course, Kiki has shorter hair. Um, but if with longer hair and even with shorter hair, this opens up the hair more. So instead of being back like this, the hair is always going to sit back here. When we lean forward, that is opening up all of that hair so that you can see more of the hair, it gives you more volume, and it gives you more opportunity to photograph. It also elongates the neck and brings back the shoulders so they look better on camera. It just looks more like, gives you a better perspective that way. So we lean forward and then second tip. So first they're leaning forward at the hip. Second tip, and I learned this from Tyra Banks. Bless you, Tyra Banks and the Tyra Banks Show. You are going to put your neck out and down. This again brings more of the hair forward. It elongates the neck. It makes the chin more pronounced and this photographs better. So we lean forward chin out, down. Perfect. Now, number two, number 10 of these tips um, is with how they're looking. Eyes say a lot. And typically our clients don't really know where they're looking, what's going on. Like how many times have I taken your picture? A thousand. And, and you know, their eyes will be like this, like looking around, like, where do I look? And that shows up in pictures. If you just see, if they're looking over this way, you just see the whites of their eyes. That is creepy as hell in the picture. So we, we're not going to do any of that. So what I have them do is I'll direct with my fingers. Like I'm going to have you look right here. And I want to make sure that on camera, that their eyes are either fully in the picture or I have them, I point to a spot down, like look at the that crack in the ground. And that way that brings their eyes all the way down to the ground. That also keeps them from immediately dropping their chin, which I mean, the our models, our clients, bless them. This is not something they're doing every day. They're not thinking about it the way that we are. So I have to give very specific directions. So let's start from the beginning. You're out here, we're taking a picture of your hair. I'm gonna say lean forward from the hip. We're gonna put your chin out and down. And I'm gonna have you look right here. And then can I have you look right down at the ground here? 
Perfect. That's it. That's it. The second pose is I'm going to have you turn all the way around and face the wall. So particularly for longer hair, I have them face the wall just like this. And then can I have you tilt your chin back an inch? Tilt back an inch. It opens up all of this hair and that's going to get a better picture. And I'll also have them look at towards your left and look towards your right. And I'll get all of the pictures of the back of the hair that way. Okay. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Kisses. <laughs> That's Kiki, everybody. Okay. So those are your posing tips. We've talked about the camera. We've talked about the styling. Um, now let's take some actual pictures. We're going to use Rachel because she's looking good. She's done up. Her hair's all did. Um, and we're going to position this as if she is a person. So we have our finished look here. I mean, she looks incredible. She looks really good with bangs, doesn't she? So I'm going to break apart these bangs. Now, the first thing that we talked about when we're taking pictures is that we want to be clear background, clear background, indirect sunlight. If you are taking your pictures inside, I have a ring light right in here. That's why I'm so well lit. But I turn them halfway down. And this, if you have a pen, please pick it up and write this down. When you're using a ring light inside, the ring light will always blow out color. It takes away detail. It's a little too much, particularly indoors. If it's not balanced with other environmental light around you, the sun lighting in the salon, if you're just using the ring light, I either recommend getting two ring lights so that you have dueling light happening. You can also buy softbox light. All of these are available online at actually pretty reasonable prices um, compared to, you know, a decade ago. So you have a lot of lighting options when you're just using one ring light. You want to turn it halfway down and move it a little bit back from you. So right now, my ring light is behind you. So that's a good like three feet away from me. That is ideal for taking pictures of hair. You really don't want to have it so lit. I know it can make it look shiny, makes it look very like pops of brightness. It's just too much and it's going to consume the picture and it's going to take out all of that beautiful detail work you did in your color and your styling. So my ring light, is three feet away from me, turned halfway down. I've got some indirect sunlight coming in from the outside for my window, so this is perfect. I have a clear background. Rachel is styled and ready to go. So the first picture we are going to take is gonna be the back of her hair. So if I have her just like this. I'm gonna have her tilt her head back just a little bit. I'm gonna come through here and we're gonna shake apart this hair while she has her head tilted. Now, I know that a lot of people love the hands back and you're doing this. If that is your jam, please go ahead and do it. But I have to, I have to tell you, we gotta slow it down. Have your client slow it down a little bit. So if you're doing this to see the movement of the hair, instead of this, we can kind of like have them put their hands back here and move it kind of slowly out this way. When we're talking about an actual picture, when we tilt back, it's important that you come through on the round of the head here and pick up some of this hair, just like this. So I wanna show you the difference when I pick up some of this hair and maybe even at the ridge here where we styled, this is going to look so much more interesting on camera than this just being flat and laying there. So I'm gonna go through and pull this apart. If you have a little bit of your working hairspray, I have Fluxus, I'm gonna come in here and I'm just using this to detail, just a little bit up at the top. 
I might even lift it up like this just to get this broken up and a little bit more texture happening. So back of the hair shot. This could look beautiful. You've done a balayage, you've done some vivid color. It's looking gorgeous. Great shot. Also can be a little boring. It could be a little visually boring. So we do want to add some kind of detail to these back of the hair shots that look visually engaging on social media. You have to think that the folks that are swiping through Let's talk about Instagram for focusing on Instagram. Folks that are swiping through, if you're looking at hair, they're looking for a new client. If they're looking for someone to follow for education, whatever it is your goal is for your Instagram, your hair Instagram, whatever your goal is, think of your audience that doesn't know you, that doesn't have any connection to you at all. They're seeing hair after hair after hair after hair. What can you do to set those images, your images apart? And the first easiest thing that you can do is to just have a little visual point of difference happening in the back here. So my go-to is usually to tie a little knot, but I also love to do a very quick braid. So if I take this little section, I separate it into two, I'm taking a third traveling strand. This is one I go to a lot. And I'm taking the strand and I'm just doing a little bit of an infinity. I wouldn't even like, we can obviously do this as a braid, but I do it more, I do it looser. So it's just a little accent happening in the back. This is also a great way to highlight dimensional color. It looks very cool when it's in this shape. So if I have this little braid in the back, I'll come through and kind of pull this apart. Pull these sections apart. Perfect. It's going to look really cool. And so in a picture, if this head is tilted back and I see this little braid, this something just a little bit interesting, maybe throw like two more in here, that instantly is going to get you a longer engagement moment with your followers, with potential followers, because something is happening other than just hair. So I could even take these sections, I might even grab a couple pins and just pin these so that in this moment, I have this slightly more interesting thing happening. This brings us to our second top tip for creating content for social media, video is the next wave. I'm sure you've heard this. If you haven't, you're hearing it right now. Video is the next wave. Video is how you are going to increase your engagement and create more engaging content. So two, two ends of the engagement spectrum. Video is going to be promoted by more platforms. Platforms like TikTok, all video. You don't want to just create slides of your work. We want to have video. Now, the top questions I get about creating video is, well, I don't, what do I do? I'm going to take a video for you here. What do I do? I don't know how to create, like, I don't have time to do that. That's a number one. Um, I'm going to call bull on that. You've got time to do it. And here is what is going to make that feel a little bit more attainable for you. There it is. This is not a blockbuster production. You're not creating a movie. It doesn't need to be a storyline. You don't have to do a voiceover. You don't have to do all of these extra steps. When I'm taking pictures, if I'm outside and we're taking pictures of my client's hair, I always switch immediately over to video and I will do a quick pan. So if I'm here, I want to adjust. I'm going to start my video. I start about here and I'll do a slow pan out like this. I will also start on the side here and I do a pan just like this. Simple, two quick pans. I'm gonna pan out and pan just means moving it just like this. So I'm gonna pan out and I'm gonna pan like this. That is it. 
I do several of those. I use them on Instagram. If for me, I'm a little bit of a ham um, and I went to college for video editing many, many years ago, many, many, many years. So that information is outdated, but I love adding a little bit of music or just something kind of fun, but you don't have to do any of that. Honestly, just having video clips, quick pans of the hair is engaging enough. That is literally all you need. As long as the lighting is good and the hair looks good, that is it. In this class, when we teach this in person, I tell the story that, I mean, it sounds silly. It sounds very silly, but it was it was an aha moment for me when I started creating more content with myself, um, wanting to grow my TikTok account, um, wanting to grow my Instagram account. I struggled so hard with having featuring myself with the content that I was doing, I felt like, well, who cares about any of this? They've probably heard this a million times. They haven't. They haven't. Um, and one day I'm at the salon, I'm taking a break, and I spent a solid minute and a half watching a video of somebody eating a salad. <laughs> Just what I watched the whole video. It was mesmerizing. I watched the whole, I was like, that salad looks good. I would like a salad. This is a cool video. Oh, where can I get a salad? And in that moment, I was like, it, I am being too hard on myself on what the actual content, it doesn't need to be a blockbuster production. All it needs to be is again, the good lighting, the good hair and quick. It's a quick clean cut. So using those panning and let's do it from the front too. I want to, I want you to see what this looks like from the front. So I would, we finish taking a picture of the back of the hair. I always do the back of the hair first um, just to get it out of the way. And then I'll take the braid out because um, my clients don't always want to leave with that braid in their hair. Even, even though they should. So if we are in the front here, let's go back to those posing tips that we just went over. I am going to have her lean her head down. If she had hips, we would lean those hips forward just like this. So I, while her head is down, you can already see how much that opens up the hair. It also makes your clients feel more comfortable when they are not taking a front forward shot. I mean, how many times have you tried to take a picture of hair and, you know, your clients smile and they're like, unusable. They're not going to like it. It doesn't showcase the hair. The hair is the star of this show. We also want our client to look good, of course, but the hair is the star of the show. So having them looking down, hips forward, chin out, down, opening up all of that hair so it comes forward, I am going to use my hands to massage at the root here, break up that hair, reactivate that dry shampoo and that texture spray. And I do a lot of this motion. I'm opening up that hair. We are going to, I have them close their eyes while I kind of place. This also helps relax them a little bit while I place these pieces by the face and then immediately see how much fuller that hair looks. Now I will take, I have my portrait mode open. I'll take a picture just like this. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then we switch quickly over to video and I'll do the same panning just like this. So if I have her looking down, I'm gonna start here and then I will pan just like that. Beautiful. And then let's do another pan where I start on the side here. I'm gonna just pan like this. That's it. That is all I'm doing. I have dozens and dozens of those videos that I can use in both posts for this particular hairstyle for this particular client. I will create like a greatest hits reel of all of these pans, keeping consistency in how you pan or how you move the camera for these little clips. They're like, 
I always suggest three to five seconds. Three to five seconds is very easy to work with on all platforms, creating reels, creating TikToks, posting to your Instagram. There's also a consistency to the movement. So when you want to create, when you're struggling to create new content and you're feeling like, I don't really know what to do, go back through your video pans and you can create a really smooth transitioning reel of all of these hair looks. It just gives you constant content to come back to later. I think one of the biggest challenges that a lot of stylists I talk to about their social content um, experience, besides just feeling like they, they don't have enough to offer, or I don't know if this is going to be interesting. It's always going to be interesting. It is always going to be interesting. Let me tell you right now. Um, the second thing that I always hear is that they struggle to think of what to post. What, what do I post now? I've posted all of my recent hair. I've posted everything that I've done recently. Not everything that you post needs to be done within that week, within that month. I think a good rule of thumb is that if it is beyond a year old, that you can kind of cite that in your captions, like, oh, flashback to this or remember this. Great. Share those memories. Share that work that you did. It doesn't go old like bread. You don't have to throw it out. You can come back to it and revisit it because people visiting your Instagram are going to appreciate that. And they have probably never seen it before. If it is work that you've done within the last year, absolutely post it again. Post it again. No one is noticing that you have already posted it. I'll tell you right now. Do you notice that about other people's? Um, so it's good to go through and have these, I organize in my photo, in my um, camera roll, I organize like balayage, vivids, videos, so that I know I can always go back to those and create reels over and over and over again. So we have gone through a lot. I know this is a lot of information. We created this style using three different tools, three different ways. If we look at this finished look, I'm like really jealous of Rachel's hair right now. It looks very good. We used a the chameleon wand with the 25 millimeter attachment. This is a must have for behind the chair and on set. Must have because it's a five piece. You have five different sizes to interchange on that chameleon wand. We created a sleeker kind of slightly less volume wave on this side. This side, we placed it more horizontally, so we got a more voluminous finish. I showed you my tips for styling fringe, a more modern fringe, more modern bangs. And then through the back, we did a much more subtle styler wave and we've got that jumbo deep waver beneath so you can see in pictures particularly when I would come through and do that little detail like have a braid etc you'll see the difference in the wave pattern and on camera that looks really really good so we've got all of those tips we talked about posing where we have our clients lean forward from the hip lean forward, chin out, chin down, direct their eyes so that you're not seeing a ton of whites of the eyes on camera. We have that pose in the back. You're leaning back to the side, to the side. And we're going in with both portrait mode at a lower f-stop and a lower exposure. We're using portrait mode to take these higher quality pictures. And you are going through with your video on my video settings, I also keep the exposure lower and I kind of hang out in an HD that's not the highest unless I'm creating a video or a tutorial or something like that. I'm not at the highest, but I'm definitely not at the lowest. So I'm kind of in the middle ground HD on my video settings with a lower exposure so that you're really getting to see all of those details and that the light isn't washing everything out. We also talked about detailing in the back, creating a braid. I also keep at the salon just clips, things that I can very quickly, I'll do like a little roll, 
clip in here. And I'll just use that to create a different look just in the back, not something that this client would normally wear out like this, but just having this little detail in, I'll take on one client on one service, if we have the time to do multiple shots with multiple accessories, multiple braids, I can then reuse those pictures over and over and over again because they're always looking a little bit different. Now, the last little tip I have for you, this is an extra credit. <laughs> um, if you are finding that you're taking pictures, you're following all of these steps, you're thinking about the lighting, you're thinking about the backdrop, you're doing your styling, the styling is beautiful, everything is coming together, but you notice that maybe your clientele, um, and as they should, they're the client, they can come in however they want, but maybe they're wearing like a sweatshirt or just the color is a little off of the clothing that they wear, or they're feeling very uncomfortable with like, you want to get a face framing photo, but they're feeling very uncomfortable. I have two things on hand at the salon all the time that solve that problem immediately. Number one, and these, it's going to seem a little silly, like you're in disguise, but I'm telling you, this is a game changer. Number one, I always have sunglasses. So I will always have some sort of sunglasses available so that when I'm taking a picture outside, even inside, immediately your clients will feel a little bit more comfortable, like the pressure is off what they're doing with their eyes. They can, they look cool immediately. Everyone looks cooler in a pair of sunglasses. So I have like a couple different styles of just cheap sunglasses. I have them up at my front desk so that if we need to, I can pop those on real quick. I will sanitize them after. Very easy to have on hand, but just instantly makes people look more comfortable and cooler. The second is I always have just at the front desk, a leather jacket. This is a fake leather jacket or a denim jacket, I have a little bit of both, so that if I am photographing hair that is, or taking video of hair on a client where maybe the hair color or the hairstyle doesn't really mesh well with what they have on, I can just quickly lay that over their shoulders and it makes a really big difference in the final product. So that's a little extra credit for you guys today. Now, it has been awesome to hang out with you on this Monday. I hope that you found these tips helpful. If you are able to in the future take Amika's Styling for Social Media full class, we go more in depth on what is your intent with your social media, what is the kind of actual content and a content calendar you can be creating to really hone in on how you are using social media as a professional tool versus just like a dumping ground of like, you know, some hair picks, this is what I had for lunch, you know, a meme, really helping to strategize what you're posting and when. Um, so this gives you some great tips for actual styling, for posing, for creating better content. If you have any follow-up questions or would like to ask me more, please come find me on Instagram or on TikTok. I'm Christina Carlson with two S's, Coif, C-O-I-F, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions there. Also, please follow Amika Pro. On Instagram, this is our pro account that has all these kind of different product tools and styling tools, information about classes, and on our loveamica.com website, we have a digital academy that often has classes like this or other classes, product styling, etc., that you can learn more about Amica and more Amica techniques. So thank you so much for joining me. Rachel thanks you, Kiki my model thanks you, and enjoy the rest of your Monday and I hope to see you next time. Bye.